Hello and welcome to AIS Accounting Information Systems and Overview. This is our first chapter video lecture. Here are all of our learning objectives, some of the ones that you should focus on to prepare for your final exam and just in general are the difference between data and information, right? We want to know those characteristics and, the, and how to determine value. Also, um, explain the decisions an organization makes, so you need to understand basic information and in order to gather that to be used for decision making. We're going to talk about transactions between um, all stakeholders, internal and external. And we're also going to discuss several major business processes um, that most companies have and how the AIS actually um, processes those transactions and processes the functions. Uh, most importantly, what AIS can add in terms of value, what it can contribute to the strategy and the value chain. So first, let's talk about data and information. Data is basically just facts, right? They're numbers, they're dates. This is examples here. So you can have a, a date, maybe ABC company, 123, 99, 320, 60. All of that is just information. Now, when you take that data, and you actually show it with some type of context, then we have information. So this is where we want no naked numbers, right? We want all numbers in a spreadsheet to have some labels. So these labels are what takes data and makes them into information. So now this date, well, you actually know is the invoice date. This one, two, three is an invoice number. You couldn't tell that from before. And here you see that it looks like we're purchasing some items. So we have 99 is the item number, the quantity, and the price to get our totals. So we need actual numbers and data to have labels to be able to make it information. And information is valuable, right, when you want to know the benefits must out see outweigh the costs, right? So for example, we need to, if it's too pricey to gather this data and then use it for information, if it doesn't give us that great of a benefit, then you don't want to do it. An example would be depreciation. Right, you're not actually going to check up on an equipment to see exactly how much you use. You estimate it using some type of method for depreciation, straight line, sum of years digit, um, or double declining balance, and you leave that there. So the benefits, and hopefully with AIS, is improved decision making, right, or improved allocation of scarce resources. So this allocation hopefully gets, so the benefit is you're allocating properly, you're maybe operating efficiently, you're improving your decisions, and then the cost because it is time and resources that you need to gather that information. So information is useful if it has seven properties. And you will see that these seven properties kind of coincide with SFAC, right? Our Statement of Financial Accounting Standards, SFAC. So this is like our fundamental conceptual framework for accounting, and you see that this information is also what makes this these quality these qualitative characteristics is what makes information useful, right? Relevant, you need the information in order to make a decision. For example, you may want to extend credit to a customer, you may want to um, request payment, you may want to know if you re have to reorder a product and understand the cycle count. The information needs to be reliable, no bias. Completeness, uh, it doesn't omit any aspect or any event, it's total. Timely, right, you need to have the information um, in prior to making the decision and maybe have several uh, alternatives and more information on various alternatives to make that decision. Understandability, right, it has to be some type of manner that's meaningful that people can use. And then verifiability is that both you and I will come to the same conclusion based on this information. So when you're thinking of verifiability, think of transactions that turn into general journals, right? If we all know how to record a debit and a credit, so if we actually sell revenue uh, for $100, we're going to debit cash and credit sales revenue. You and I would do that transaction the same way. It is verifiable. And accessibility is it's available to those people who need it and when they need it. So please keep in mind, relevant, reliable, complete, timely, understandable, verifiable, and accessible. Seven general characteristics that make information useful. Now, organizations need this information because what they do is they use it to get things done, right? They create processes, maybe SOP, Standard Operating Procedures.
And so they're basically these processes are structured activities that you do that are performed to get to a specific goal, closing the month, preparing financial statements, recording all cash transactions. Then once you do that, you can make decisions on that information that come from the process of your day-to-day -day accounting activities. So there, these, transactional, tran these transactional data that's happening, they usually happen between internal and external parties, right? So you conduct business within your organization and without. Within the organization, your stakeholders are employees, managers, Outside of the organization, it could be your trading partners, your vendors, your customers, uh, and also banks, governmental organizations, regulatory bodies. So what the AIS system does is it gives you this flow of information and it allows you to capture that information for various transactions, synthesize it, summarize it, and then share it with your stakeholders, both internal and external. So these interactions are various, and this is a very um, great slide because it shows you how the organization interacts with the AIS system. So for example, here with vendors, you might remember you have a three-way match, right? So you have purchase orders, receiving of the goods, and then the invoice to subsequently get to the payment. Uh, for creditors, right, you actually request a loan, you make a loan payment, and then you properly record the current and the long-term portion on your financial statements. Banks, everybody, remember cash is king. And basically you have deposits, withdrawals, you're making EFT, right, electronic funds transfer patient, uh, uh, transactions, electronic funds transfers. Customers, this is primary, right, here's your revenue cycle. And you see how each one of these coincide with some type of module. This would be revenue or your sales module. This would be accounts payable. This would be your cash or bank rec module. Right, then you have employees. This would be your payroll and HR module. Management, this would be maybe your general ledger, your financial statements and financial reporting. And then governmental agencies as well. So that could kind of coincide. These two groups may be using the same types of information. So please keep this in mind and keep in mind the documents like purchase orders, sales orders, um, you know, wages in terms like your timesheets. Just keep in mind all the source documents that are associated with each of these processes. So basically transactions are what start the whole process, right? And usually transactions have some source document, preferably electronically, and that's what creates this give and take. So for revenues, you provide the goods or you give the service and then you get cash. For an expenditure, you get inventory, let's say, then you pay with cash. So each cycle has both a give and take. So all of that discussion about transaction leads us to exactly what is an AIS system, an accounting information system. You will be working with an electronic one, Great Plains, and a manual one, your system's understanding aid throughout this course. So preferably it is computerized because that just gives you more robustness and ability and scalability, right? And your AIS is, involves people, processes, technology, right? All your data, the software, the maintenance, the database cleanup, and then controls, right? Because remember, we want to safeguard information and we think an AIS information is an asset. So remember one of our primary fundamental, we want to safeguard assets, especially cash. Well, same thing with our information. So these transactions are collected and stored in a fashion that the business can make decisions and then we're hoping that this is done accurately, free of misstatement, free of error and fraud because we have accurate, accurate controls, adequate controls to protect the information. And in this case, our information is data, our data assets, all of the customer information, credit card information. So where does it add value? Why do several companies spend tons of thousands of dollars, if not millions, if we're talking about S, um, SAS and Oracle and Great Plains to implement an AIS. Well, basically it gives you the ability to make quality decisions and you can reduce the cost of making decisions because you have reports readily available. Dashboards can be one area of the AIS that's used quite heavily now where you just get a snapshot, KPIs, key performance indicators of an organization that would come from uh, the AIS system. Also, we have now big data, 
right? Big data is just large quantities of data that are collected out there in um, cyberspace, right, through, the, through social media and other internet activity. So now we're also being able to use this big data, which could also be qualitative characteristics, and try to implement that into our AIS system as well. So AIS hopefully will influence your strategy. Your strategy is basically from an organization is the goal that it wants to achieve. Do you want higher profits, maybe greater increase in sale, larger market scale, greater, greater profit margin? So whatever that goal is, then what you can do as an organization is determine what you need to do to reach it. And usually if something gets measured, it gets monitored, right? So if you measure something, it gets to the point that it gets monitored. Hence why we measure sales, we measure uh, you know, expenses just to ensure that we're doing that. The AIS system gets us through that. And then the AIS system is part of the value chain where you have several activities that actually provide value. Doesn't always have to be to the customer, it could be to your employees, it could be to the organization itself. And basically within this AIS, the value chain, you have primary activities and support activities. Primary activities are direct value to the customer, and then support activities are more to enable these primary activities to be efficient and effective. So these support activities you'll see here are some HR, technology, ITS is usually in here, your purchasing manager. And then you have your primary activities, obviously the receiving, so your shipping department, well, inbound logistics, we have shipping operations where you're actually producing it, maybe your product lines are part of that, your distribution going out, so you have receiving and shipping out. Marketing and sales is a primary activity, you have to sell your product, and then service, this is sometimes questioned if it's a primary or a support activity. This service can go both ways. You're repairing maybe your um, production equipment, it would be a primary activity, but if you're just maintaining and uh, repairing any office equipment, it could also be a support activity. And lastly, you see AIS is filled with terminology and acronyms as, as all other parts of accounting are. So these are just the key terms um, for this chapter. This concludes our video lecture.